Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. Ah, that's gold. I had something clever to say. It must seem really exciting that I get to travel all over the world and shoot this show, and it is. I mean, it's great fun, I love it, but I do spend a lot of time alone in hotel rooms working on scripts and missing my family. So it's not really all fun and games. It does have a downside. The film crew spends a lot of time moving gear and traveling to far-flung destinations where we shoot. And you should see our excess baggage fees. Once we arrive, we have to collect our gear. And this is one of the most stressful parts of the shoot. Losing our baggage is one of the biggest worries because without our gear, we can't dive or shoot. And the airlines lose our bags all the time. This is the part where you cross your fingers and hope all the bags make it. So far we got half. On this trip to Queensland, Australia, Jonathan is traveling with Julia Tchaikovsky, who is the production manager, and Carrie Heard, the cameraman. One pack. And the door will close. Okay, here we go. Watch. You ready? Observe. Observe again. <laughs> Observe. Voila. Not even a challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, peace. At most destinations, we're met by representatives of the local tourism board or dive organizations that's collaborating on the segment. This is where our specific plan for the shoot starts to come together. Inevitably, this plan involves a boat. And since everyone on the team is a skilled cinematographer, we all collaborate on the photography. A big part of the show is shooting what we call stand-ups, where Jonathan talks to the camera about what we're about to do, or explain something sciency. Let's go check it out! Once we finally get in the water, we often spend the majority of our time just looking for the thing we came to shoot. This is nature, and it doesn't always cooperate. Not every dive is that great, and there are lots of dives where we don't film anything interesting. Sometimes we even go home from a shoot empty-handed, unable to capture what we came to get. We hate it when that happens. Underwater, we use two cameras. Jonathan concentrates on shooting the shots of marine life, and the other cameramen, such as Pierre, Carrie, Todd, or me, will concentrate on getting the shots of Jonathan interacting with the marine life. Sometimes it can take a while just to set up one shot. We often use tripods and elaborate lighting to achieve the look we want. But other times, the action is so fast, we just shoot as best we can and try and keep the action in the frame. But no matter what, we always have fun working on the show. And there's no shortage of goofing around on location. Now don't get any shots of these pink at the end of the day's diving, Jonathan often works on the script. The script is always changing because we shoot things we didn't expect to find, or we fail to shoot things we had planned for. Then he transcribes the stand-ups. Yes, it's true. I write the script on my computer and then I have to make a cheat sheet. There's always more stand-ups to shoot, and Jonathan, frankly, is terrible at remembering his lines. What a miraculous spectacle. Millions and millions of coral polyps all releasing their eggs at the same time, synchronized by the phase of the moon and stuff like that. <laughs> because of this, shark diving has become a safe and fun and popular and also cool 
thing that you can do if you go to faraway places and dive with them. What do you think? Huge schools of fish! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> He's got me! <laughs> this limestone was formed. Whoa! <laughs> Another bottom dwelling shark. <laughs> we are fortunate to work in some gorgeous locations. But because of our schedule, we have to shoot at certain times of the day, and that gives us some downtime. Since we can only swim with the whale sharks in the morning, we have the whole afternoon to think up ways to kill time, and I think I've found a great one. film crew has advantages. We get to experience some really exciting stuff, like shooting aerials over places like the Great Barrier Reef, the Bahamas, or the St. Lawrence River. Mia, the production manager, is digging it. And Jonathan gets a thrill out of hanging out of the open door of a helicopter. In the office, Christine, who's the series executive producer, spends a lot of time working on budgets. She writes proposals and tries to find funding. Every once in a while, she goes on a shoot as production manager too. Once the footage for a segment is complete, one of the four editors will start a rough cut, which is like a rough draft of the segment, pulling the basic story together. This is Art Cohen working on a segment about Jake. Meanwhile, Carrie and Linda Hurd are editing a segment about the Great Barrier Reef. As each rough cut is completed, Jonathan reads the final script in the narration booth. Little plastic triangular arrows that point the way out. Then one of the editors adds the final narration to the segment. Here, Tim Howe is tweaking the final version of the humpback whale segment. Scattering places in the world, the Silver Banks, the Dominican Republic. Next, the files are transferred over the internet to a home in suburban Connecticut, over a hundred miles from Blue World headquarters. This is the home studio of Bruce Zimmerman, the Blue World series composer. It's called an ambush predator because it waits for the prey to come within striking range and then lunges for it, rather than trying to chase prey around. In his basement, he writes all the music for the series as an original score. Predator, this little shark hides from us in the reef. Bruce fits right in with us. He's a goofball too. <laughs> then we get to put the music into the edits. Jonathan enjoys editing and his favorite part is doing the music and the sound, which is the last stage of the editing process. Once all the segments for the season are finished, Art Cohen comes into the studio to record the teases and the bumpers that are used between the segments on the program. First, he's an aquarist for a day at the New England Aquarium. All of this today on Jonathan Bird's Blue World. Well, this is where it all comes together. This is the nerve-wracking final part of the journey where all of the shows, which are edited in the final cut system, go to tape. We have to rent this very expensive deck uh, for a weekend, and uh, I sit here and uh, stress out while it goes to tape and hope that nothing goes wrong. And so far, so good. Tim and Jonathan take turns watching carefully as the program is recorded to broadcast quality tape. These masters will go to be closed captioned, then broadcast on public television. They can't have 
any mistakes. As you can see, Jonathan Bird's Blue World is a team effort. And if it weren't for all these talented people working on the program, there wouldn't be a Jonathan Bird's Blue World. And we wouldn't have so much success. <laughs>